Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about Azure Cosmos DB as a vector database. My name is Michael John Pena. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP and a data and AI director for Playtime Solutions. So why do we need to talk about vectors, right? And in particular, Cosmos DB as vector database. So in your journey towards um, large language models, generative AI and Copilot, we created this hierarchy called the Copilot hierarchy of needs and wants. And personal exposure is about just checking out ChatGPT, um, Copilot, and stuff like that. Group consumption is when you know the group started to look at the, these tools and use it for their businesses. And it's really when you get to this connected data when you want to explore, you know, how do I connect my own data to this new technologies, this new generative AI technologies, right? And with that, you have a concept of something called an RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, right? Where in your application, talks to a server and talks to a, an indexer of some sort and stores and retrieve those vector embeddings, right? I will talk more about that in a few. And when you talk about vector databases on Azure, there isn't any native um, solution out there. When we talk about native, there's no such thing as Azure vector database product out there. The only way to host native um, vector databases out there is to use things like Azure Container Apps, Kubernetes, or virtual machines. Um, however, if you want to use or leverage a NoSQL approach, you can use something like Cosmos DB and Redis. And if you still want to use SQL, you can use Azure SQL and Postgres. But then if you want to do it in a, in a point of view of performing search, you can use something like Azure AI search. So that's why when you're in this vector database journey on Azure, you might need to use a different set of tools depending on which one to use. In particular for Cosmos DB, there are actually three options out there, right? So the first op option is to use an Azure AI search via an indexer. This is a no code solution. And the second one is to use the MongoDB core capability of Azure Cosmos DB, basically leveraging MongoDB's capability as your vector storage. And lastly, is to use Postgres with a Citus extension so that you have that global scale. And at the same time, the most important bit is using PG vector extension to allow a more native capability of storing vector embeddings. <clears throat> Let's start with the AI search journey. So with AI search, all you got to do is that because you're doing it in a point of view of search, all it needs to do is just retrieve a bunch of data. In this case, something like um, Cosmos DB is a data source. And then there's a um, series of events such as the data cracking, enriching, and um, capabilities around embedding things like using Azure OpenAI's ADA002 uh, embedding model to do all those uh, operations for you automatically, right? And then with that, all of those embeddings from your data source are now actually stored in Azure AI search. So <clears throat> that means that the data from your source eventually gets converted as an embedding uh, in a vector representation and stored in AI search. And from that point forward, um, an application such as a web app or you know, a backend or a mobile app can now communicate through your data using AI search. So to put that in perspective, all you gotta do is um, in AI search, add a data source. And in that adding of data source, you just have to select a database. And in this case, that's going to be Cosmos DB and perform some data field mapping, right? And just um, continue throughout the step and you'll have an easy, um, ready-made connection for you. To show you how, how it looks like, on my right, I have a Cosmos DB called Cosmos NoSQL Vector. And in that, I have a database called Vulcan DB. And with that database, I have a Volcanoes collection, right? So this is just a bunch of um, Volcanoes out there. Um, that you can actually kind of like, um, it shows the, the name of the volcano, the country of origin and the region, and some other uh, types like elevation type and status, right? So I've already performed a bunch of queries in Azure OpenAI. And with that, 
um, I first start asking, can you list down all the Japan volcanoes, right? Or at least most of the Japan volcanoes. So he was able to list, list it all down, you know, the uh, Fuji, Fujin and stuff. Same goes with USA. And, and I even asked about the Philippines. So in this case, um, for example, with Arayat, it, you know, it, the data that was presented here in Azure OpenAI was actually representative of the data uploaded in Cosmos DB. So you can see a like-to-like -like, uh, comparison that you know, it's a stratovolcano, which is of that type, and the elevation is 1026 meters, right? So with this approach, this allows you to have a large language model capability without um, having to update a model frequently, right? You can just base it off from your own data anytime. Now I wanna talk about MongoDB core, right? So the beauty of um, Azure Cosmos DB is that we have a lot of options out there to use different set of technologies and it's already scalable in, in a way that it's globally accessible. And just adding these capabilities of vectors is just like adding a new data set or a new data type, right? So it's not the way you provision the infrastructure, the way you interface with the application would still be relatively the same. It's just that you are introducing this new set of um, services and capabilities. So I have a sample code in here. We're in, um, it's a Python notebook. Um, we're in, I'm interfacing using PyMongo. So we, in here, I created an, um, an index called Easy Tech Test Index and a collection, which is Easy Test Collection. And in this case, I'm using Azure OpenAI to um, create that embedding capabilities for us. Right? And in here, I'm also using something called Langchain to perform the, um, the chunking or the uh, separation of a document for me, right? So I have a document here called pradapi.txt. It's basically a collection of services in Azure about data analytics, right? So I talk about Fabric, Databricks, and um, Data Factory and Pipelines. So when I go back here, all I'm doing here is that, hey, try to ingest all this you know, information from that text file and use the Azure OpenAI embeddings, which is, again, the ADA002 uh, model. And from there, um, I want to connect to the MongoDB cluster that I provisioned. Uh, using again MongoDB core, a uh, very important distinction out there. And from there, um, all I'm doing is that I'm creating this vector store that all those documents that I'm trying to kind of like embed or you know chunk um, and slice it up, I want to put them to um, to that Cosmos DB. And as part of that, I need to create an index as well. So from there, I can now perform a similarity search between embeddings, right? So when I perform a query of Microsoft Fabric features, um, it can perform that similarity search to actually search that in which part of the document it mentions Microsoft Fabric features. And in this case, um, it, it did pull up that, hey, when I, talk, when I was talking about Microsoft Fabric, it did pull up that section. And furthermore, you can also um, can now perform a similarity search between a query and the ingested document as well. So what that means is that Cosmos DB is now acting something like a, a caching layer for you so that you don't have to have to retrieve or perform those embedding operations all over again. And to look what's inside the, um, the database, if I open my database, you can see that if I try to find all the collections in that easy test collection, uh, all the documents in there, you can see that all of these embeddings that um, Langchain created for us are now in here. Here's the text content and the vector content are in here on the right. So with that, you can actually leverage the Cosmos DB, MongoDB core capability as your vector database, right? Because at the end of the day, a vector database is just a storage of all these vector contents, right? Like 
Um, and all it does is that it performs a bunch of um, similarity algorithms to know that you know when you're performing a query, it converts to vectors and tries to compare that to the vector content in that database. And that's the whole uh, point of vector database we're in. It's about how accurate and how similar a search result could be. Okay. Now let's move on to Postgres. Um, Postgres is one of the most loved um, database out there. Arguably, it's probably not just a SQL database anymore. It's already um, a database that can support a lot of different things, right? And if you put it this way, um, Postgres was um, created before MongoDB. But then during that time, a lot of the capabilities of MongoDB was also imbued in Postgres, such as um, the, the global scaling capability. And hence, with um, Azure Cosmos DB, it have that Citus extension that allows you to have a globally scalable Postgres database. And now, um, with something like PG Vector, you can actually integrate vector embeddings as well in that globally scalable Postgres database. So to see that in action, let's go back to VS Code. Uh, in this case, um, it's a bit different. What I did here is that um, I'm using Psycop G. So it's a um, it's an extens extension within PG Vector that allows you to um, you know, utilize different vector capabilities in Postgres, right? So first off, I need to do all of these imports and set up my database here. Um, just so you know, uh, and it's very important for those who want to explore this up, that you need to use the Postgres SQL um, prefix, not the Postgres uh, prefix for this to work. Then I'm just generating a ra random data here, right? And all I'm doing here is that first, I need to create the extension vector. So PG vector is called vector um, as an extension. Then if this vector uh, extension doesn't exist, it's first going to create that. And then um, after that, um, I'm just creating a table called vector documents. And within that, you know, after creating the vector documents table, I'm just loading a bunch of random um, vector data out there, right? And it's just, um, I just want to show that, you know, loading million rows, it only took me around less than two minutes, right? Which is a very powerful capability of um, Postgres on Cosmos DB. And with that, you know, um, I just exited and ma made sure that the connection is with, um, is clear for good measure. So to see what's out there, so if I go to the vector database here on the left, uh, in particular, the Postgres database. So you can see, um, first I wanna show that I'm connected to the Citus database of um, Postgres, again, on Azure Cosmos DB. And then um, in particular, I wanna look at the site, the in public and in database objects, I wanna look at the extensions, right? So in extensions, you can see there's the Citus extension. Again, that's what powers this globally um, powerful um, Cosmos DB database. And again, in, in that topic of vectors, you need to make sure that the PG vector extension, AKA vector extension is installed. So from there, um, the one we just did earlier, they are actually store, stored in a table called vector documents. And in that vector documents, we have a, all, you know, a bunch of different random embeddings data for you. And there you go, right? Like um, you get, with this approach, you can use um, Postgres as well as your vector database. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And if you want to learn more, um, you can go to this website. You can add me on LinkedIn or email me. Thank you very much. <laughs>